really isn't about the size of the penis, but the way in which you use it. When asking uh, partners to people with penises, 85% of partners say that they're very satisfied with their partner's size. Ironically though, only 45% of men felt satisfied and felt adequate enough in their size. So even with what is technically termed a micro penis, meaning less than three and a half inches, which only affects less than 1% of the population, you're actually still very adequate to be able to reach some of the most erogenous zones and size of a person's body, such as the G spot or the prostate, which are only about half an inch to an inch inside of them. So with a little bit of focus on anatomy and how to use technique, you can actually learn to do anything Thing and be able to provide all kinds of pleasure regardless of your penis size. So it's really important that we break this myth around penis size so that men start to value themselves sexually for more than the size of their penis, such as their ability to connect, their ability to be present, their ability to learn their own anatomy, as well as their partners. We have this oversimplified understanding of the male arousal system that basically the second a man gets aroused, they should get hard, that they should stay hard throughout an entire sexual experience. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It's actually natural that a penis will go through a cycle of hardness throughout a sexual experience. This allows them to adapt to their partner's um, sexual arousal level. This allows the partner to maybe start off limp and actually grow inside their partner, which is going to help them deal with any kind of penetration anxiety that they might have. This is a really important myth to bust so that men don't put all this anxiety on themselves or pressure on themselves to perform. Even in porn, they're using pills typically and taking breaks between scene shots. Now, this is also equally important, however, for partners to people with penises, so that way they don't take it personally if the person goes limp, or that they don't start to question the other person's potency. We need to quit having such a strong emphasis only on orgasm and ejaculation as opposed to pleasure. Because when it comes to sex, all of the health benefits really come from maintaining those high states of arousal and pleasure that happen before the orgasmic release. Also for men to know that they don't need to actually ejaculate is going to allow them to be able to have a sexual experience that won't, uh, won't have them feeling depleted and with less energy after. Instead, they'll be able to start building up their potency. Notice that if they're not ejaculating as much, they'll have an easier access to erections, as well as a greater ability to be able to last long enough to provide the pleasure for their partner. Traditionally, we believe erectile dysfunction to be something that only affects men over the age of 50. However, the fastest growing population of those who actually suffer from an a form of erectile dysfunction are those under the age of 30. And it's not due to physical reasons, but instead psychological. In fact, it's 50% of men under the age of 30 suffer from performance anxiety. And when asked, many of them would rather break up than actually communicate and address this issue with their partner. Simply by talking to their partner is enough to help them to be able to get that erection again. When a man is actually with a partner, a lot of times they don't get an erection because they haven't yet made an emotional connection to the person. They haven't established some intimacy. This myth really alienates men who don't feel that way. And on the other side, it also shames those women who do think about sex a lot. When looking at modern day studies on uh, in the UK, they found that we're in a sex recession and the sex recession isn't being led primarily by women, but those men who are under the age of 30 who'd rather just simply avoid sex. When working in sexually positive communities, it's oftentimes a man that will bring their partner into that community, but then once they get into it, they're actually rather surprised when it's the woman's sexual prowess, the woman's desire that overrides theirs. After all, women can have multiple orgasms, women can last for a very long time, and when they're in those heightened states of arousal, they actually stay maintained, in which case then they may actually be thinking about sex more often than a man would. <laughs> <laughs>